Hello and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. My name is Serge. Today I'm joined by Nelson. Look. I got a wheeler. Gaffer. Huge shout out to James on Tech and to our wonderful team of editors who make this all possible. Speaking of making this all possible, there's you with your support of the Patreon over at patreon.com slash loading ready run. All right. Bit of a weirder episode today. We're going to be talking about the... Uh, the Commander cards. I'm about to say the Canadian Highlander cards. The Commander cards. And so we're going to be touching a little bit on a couple of the colors, focusing pretty heavily on gold today, artifact, and lands. And there's one card that we definitely missed in the previous episode. We'll point it out when we get to it. A reminder that, that our set review is not exhaustive. We don't talk about every single card, only the cards that we think are relevant, or the cards that we think you're going to point out that we miss, even if we don't necessarily think they're a slam dunk. We want to get ahead of those conversations. Without further ado, Wheeler, start us off. The Gaffer. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Two and a white for a 2-3 legendary creature. It's a halfling peasant. With at the beginning of each end step, if you gained three or more <sighs> life this turn, draw a card. I hate this. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Love that line of text. Yeah, I, I mean, this is a slam dunk in a deck that is near and dear to my heart, the heart of the viewers, and Surge likes playing against it, oh. right? We gonna rename it "Ruin Your Garden"? Ruin your surge, more like it. <laughs> Ruin your shire. Ruin your sh well, scour your shire. Scour your shire. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, gaining three life isn't that difficult for that deck to do, and also <laughs> gaining it on your opponent's turn. Stop looking at me. Is not that difficult <laughs> to do. Um, yeah, it's a two power creature, which is nice. Uh, cheap little creature which is nice. These are all factors that are relevant for some of the cards that you might find in that deck. Um, you know, be it uh, that you can get it back with Savine's Reclamation or Recommission or that it returns off of Revel Arc. There's a bunch of little things. It just draws you so many cards. So many cards. Let's move on, Nelson. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about Denethor, Stone Seer, one in a blue for a one-three legendary human noble with that gaze. Um, <laughs> yeah, looking at you. When Denethor, Stone Seer enters the battlefield, scry two. All right, and pay three and a red and tap and sacrifice Denethor. Target player becomes the monarch. Denethor deals three damage to any target. Woo, that's not a terrible rate. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. I don't know if uh, maybe not Blue Moon, but uh, maybe Blue Moon actually. This <laughs> brought, this might get some action in Blue Moon. The uh, early body at rate plus the Scry two like Omen Seer that then turns into the Monarch late game plus a Bolt. Yeah, no, I I, I like that's in Blue Blue Moon. decks. Yeah, well, I like that's in Blue Moon specifically because correct me if I'm mistaken. There's not a lot of ways for that deck to gain the Monarch currently, short of maybe the land. There's yeah. one way to do it. You can play fall, the bad monarch cards. Go fall from favor fall is from the enchantment. Favor. That's yes. like the good fall one. From yeah, yeah, but Blue Moon is a deck that does a great job of controlling it because of the tempo and the slow way that it puts it. So any way that that deck can safely introduce the monarch, it, it's happy. And it sort of fits the play pattern of the slower control Blue Moon, less so the tempo one. So I like I. that's why I like this card. When you look at that evaluation, like early game, it kind of fits with the strategy. Late game, it introduces the monarchy and it does a great job of holding it. And that deck loves card advantage. Any target. Any target. Any target. Any target. It's yeah. not bad. Yeah. They've been doing that more and more lately. Mm -hmm. Hey, last few years of Magic Design, they're giving Bolt back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have the card we missed earlier, Mordor Muster. So one in a black for a sorcery. Draw a card, lose a life, amass one. So you put a 1-1 one, one into play. And there's a long line of two mana 1-1 one, one creatures that draw you a card and lose you a life. This is solid. It's also a sorcery, which is relevant in decks that could replay it. So if you're a blue deck or a red deck, red maybe not as much, but there are decks that care about the fact that it's a sorcery. It could be an upside. This is just a standard role player. We've seen it before, but worth a nod and probably in response to a lot of comments. <laughs> maybe. There's a long line of these. There's one. <laughs> well, sorry, uh, like Elvish Visionaries is yeah, more yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. talking about. Like yeah. two out of one ones, I draw a card. Uh, yeah. This specific format's a little bit different. But, you know. Also, somebody's going to say there's two. That skeleton doesn't count. It's bad. It can't block. 
Fair. Yeah. Yeah. They were typing it out as yeah. I said it. Right. Thank you for the save. All oh, right. Anytime. Arwen, Weaver of Hope. This is from the Commander set. One green green for a 2-1 legendary creature, Elf Noble. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with a number of additional 1-1 one, one counters on it equal to Arwen's toughness. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just look at this for the first time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yo, it's this a, card's cracked. It's Whoa. a really powerful Whoa. ability. But I'm... Uh, I mean, this is the kind of thing where if you're in, like, a two-colored counters deck, I could see you jamming this. Like, green-black or green-white. But typically, those decks go up to three colors now, or even more than that. Uh, it's kind of like... The counters decks have gone through the same kind of evolution as the Aristocrats decks, where... It's just better to play as many colors as you can. That's fair. Just because the uh, triumphs. J triumphs. Um, but this is also just a three mana legendary creature without an ETB that dies to, uh, I don't know. Everything? A, st a <laughs> stiff breeze, <laughs> which is not great. It dies to Fork Bolt as it comes down, yep. which is pretty yep. unappealing. Yeah. I, I mean, think if you're playing Renata, this is an upgrade. Yeah, yep. yeah, for sure. It's... Yeah. But, like, how many people are playing Renata, right? I'm going to just, uh, you know, I'm going to embrace this uh, position I have on the show now. It's a pretty good card for a pretty bad deck. <laughs> you know? We got, hey, we've solidified you as the heel. That's okay. Yep. I just think this card, like, screams really high floor, really low ceiling. Right? Like, the, the situations where this card is good and, like, helped you win when you weren't already winning, it, like, leads to you winning so big that it's going to always feel like a win more. Yeah. I think. But you mentioned all the problems with it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. It's time to talk about... Let's see if I do my best Wheeler R roll here. Prized pig. No, it was... Prized. We well, prize. I love this card. Never continue, quite... Yeah. yeah, never quite uh, mastered that skill while I was learning French. Anyways, we've got one in a green for a 0-3 boar. Whenever you gain life, put that many ribbon counters on Prize Pig. Then, if there are three or more ribbon counters on Prize Pig, remove those counters and untap it. Plus, it taps for one mana of any color. So, yeah, another great mana dork from this set. Uh, not quite as exciting as the Halfling, because it costs two mana, but it taps for any color all the time. And it can kind of combo off sometimes if you're doing life gain shenanigans. Uh, even if you're only instantly gaining life here and there from... You know, all the little ways that you do just getting a second mana sometimes is great like i'm a fan of uh sorry the dissension or not dissension the ravnica elf from the more recent ravnica set zero th incubation druid oh, oh there. yeah yeah i got yeah. there incubation druid you know like sometimes it makes more than one mana mm -hmm. or elysian car hurry of course everybody loves devoted druid and i feel like yeah the third life gain nets you another mana that that lets prize pig in to that squad so if you're playing the sometimes more than one mana for, for two mana dorks, welcome. You got another one. Like the Abzan Soul Sisters deck could mm. maybe get away with this. I'm just, how, what? Sorry, I'm really. I actually would just jam this incidentally in like any deck with, with a Sylvan Kari to I would oh. consider putting this in as well. Okay. Just because I'm a fan of like this archetype. We've just gotten so many of those cards. Like really? is this beating yeah. out Armored Scrap Gorger? Oh, that's a good question. Ooh. So, our Scrap Gorger doesn't ever add an extra mana. It's a, it's right. on its own little small team. Right, it's with a like zero a, three. Yeah, it's a zero three for two mana. Taps to add a mana, and then it turns into a threat. Whereas this turns into maybe adds two mana on weird turns or synergizes in a life gain deck with additional cards. Though that's my thing. Yeah, is that, uh, like, Scrap, Scrap Gorger is going to do something all the time in addition to adding the mana. Whereas yeah. this just might be like a draft card i guess i underestimated, yeah. underestimated just how many two mana tap for any color we have in the format now there's a lot now yeah it's getting because my original evaluation of this card was as high as nelly's like i like this a lot it felt like low cost of inclusion upside and synergizes in the right deck because again because i'm sure somebody in the comments is going to try and specify it's like no you get one ribbon counter for every life so a food counter automatically untaps and like yeah we're, we're doing that math like we we know how that works we want to make sure that you understand that we understand how this card works <laughs> yeah it's a good pig i mean i like the art <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I guess the upside is not high enough to edge out any of the other cards that do effectively this, eh? 
it's not like a better card overall. Like like you said, there's going to be certain homes for it that like it the most. It gives off big vibes of a card you include in your deck. Someone asks how it did, and you're like, oh, it was great. And all it did was add mana. <laughs> right. Like, maybe that's fine. Maybe that's maybe you just get the flexibility to play, like, yeah. a couple of these. There's but. plenty of games where your Sylvan Karyatid, like, didn't ever get targeted, and, like, you blocked some tutus with it. Yeah. Right? And, like, it, it plays that role really well. Sure. Mm -hmm. and but the, you're, like, so much safer with the Sylvan Karyatid because you know they'll never get you with an extra point of damage. Whereas the prize pig, there might be the mind game of, like, I can't block that tutu. It just dies. But, yeah, I don't know. No, you're, you're right. All right, let's move on to the gold section, and here is where we solidly get back into the normal lane of a set review. It's an intermix of both commander cards and not commander cards. The first one is a commander card, Aragorn, King of Gondor. Aragorn? Aragorn. God. Gorn. Please don't roast us for the pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen already has so hard. Everybody, everybody does, right? We're gonna do our best. I guess Aragorn's kind of like a like a like a low ball, and I missed that one, but I, I digress. Four mana, four four legendary human noble. For one, a blue, a red, and a white. It has vigilance and lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, become the monarch. When it attacks, up to one target creature can't block this turn. And if you're the monarch, creatures can't block this turn. Period. I mean. This should have gone to Wheeler, but I'll take it. This is a slam dunk in Jeskai. This is... <laughs> it's very powerful. The only thing it's missing is haste, but at that point, it'd probably be like the most crack card in the set. It gives you the monarchy. Jeskai loves the monarch, especially Jeskai mid-range. It's going to hold on to it. It lets you push through damage. It gives you card advantage. It blocks forever. The only downside is it's a legend. Did I miss anything? You could put it in a more than three-color deck, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's about it yeah i mean let's <laughs> let's move on to the next aragorn wheeler you, you have to talk about aragorn oh. after, our, after, <laughs> after all oh uh, sorry uh yeah. aragorn the uniter red green white and blue for a five five legendary creature human noble whenever you cast a white spell you make a one one human soldier token whenever you cast a blue spell you scry two whenever you cast a red spell it deals three damage to target opponent. Whenever you cast a green spell, target creature gets plus four, plus four end, until end of turn. Notably, this is templated like a card from Lorwyn block. <laughs> so that if you cast a, let's say, another copy of Aragorn, um, while that's on the stack, you get all of these abilities because you have cast a blue spell, you have cast a white spell, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, it's uniting the Balefire lieges. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's uniting all of the lieges of Eventide. That's who he's uniting. So you can't compare this to the first Aragorn because that first Aragorn is just, well, I mean, yeah. Very but different. <laughs> different card for sure. Although I think this card, like, it is a giant donkey. Like, it's just a four mana, five, five. And this mana cost is whatever. We can deal with that. That's not even hard to hit. We have triumphs. Um, and as long as the first spell you cast after casting Aragorn is some color other than blue, you're doing pretty good. Like, Aragorn into Lightning Bolt is pretty hot. Aragorn into hold up a swords to plowshares is pretty strong or just aragorn here's my five five deal with it untap probably win the game um two downsides one caracas exists and two it doesn't have any keywords by itself and none of the keywords on it actually remove blockers very well i mean you can cast blue spells get that extra scry to find ways to remove blockers to get things through this is just a chunky lad that has so much chunk, I think it has potential to break through some of the downsides. So, like, four-color blood, humans, what what shell does this, what deck does this go in? I mean, just, like, a hot bant, like, the uh, hot bant omnitiative could play it. Um, like, a four-color humans list could play this. Like, a four-colors legends matter deck could mm. play this. It's just so big. Also, it's Can Lighter in 2023. You could just throw a bunch of good cards together in the same colors yeah, that, and probably just kill people. That's where I'm saying. I'm seeing it in just like the five color good stuff sort of quasi check pile maybe where you're just like, yeah, all my cards are meant to be like two for ones or just cards that are really good on rate. Yeah. And you just have this in there to be like, okay, well, now I'm making a bit more value. And also this was just a four mana five five that I put in, you know? Yeah. I think this card might be scarier than this might get me... Uh, 
canceled. canceled. But I think let's all card, get canceled. This card might be scarier to me than the four mana Omnath. By yeah. like it, the the four mana Omnath has been a card that is just like being kind of unimpressive in like the Jeskai green lists, um, the more controlling variants, and even for the Omnitiative cards, it's like not that great. It's a it's it ends up being more of a pet card than anything, unless you have additional. Like you're going runner runner with these fetches, or you yeah, got run in six that, going. That's fair. Yeah, if you're not doing a lands thing, Omnath is a mid range card. And I, it, I, it's, okay. And it's 2023, so it sounds wild to say, but you know, four toughness ain't what it used to be. <laughs> sure. Flame slash is back, baby. Killing everything. I mean, five isn't what it used to be either. You they made kill. that that two mana one that can get a planeswalker now for for damage, right? I don't know if I don't know if the decks in Canadian Islander even play that actually, but it's like what? another what are you talking about? obliterating bolt. I don't know. Does that? Oh cease yeah, play? yeah, yeah. No obliterating bolt sees play. Trying to give yeah. you another four yeah. damage card. No, okay. the way you worded it, it sounded like it tutored a planeswalker. Oh no, and sorry. then you said like I don't know how much mana it is. I'm like, are you on some like five <laughs> mana commander card? Is, is that only on the same podcast yeah. the rest of us are on? Yeah. yeah. All right, let, let's move on. Sure. Okay, sorry. But I like both Aragorns. Let's talk about another king. It's Aomer, King of Rohan. Oh, yeah. Three generic red-white for a 2-2 human noble with double strike. And this enters with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each other human you control. Okay, which deck is it going to go in? I wonder. <laughs> also, when Aomer enters the battlefield, target player becomes the monarch. Hey, we're doing a lot of that. And Aomer deals damage equal to its power to any target. Now, notably, yes, I'm sure you can all read, but I just want to make sure it's spelled out there. The first ability is replacement effect, or sorry, the second ability, I guess. The plus one, plus one counters are like a enters with, not when this enters. And then the become monarch and deals damage is, is a when. So it will be as large as two plus however many other humans you control when it deals the damage. Um, yeah, it's expensive, and it relies on you having a bunch of other humans, but sure packs a punch i mean there's lots of boards where you just gonna be able to fireball your opponent to death immediately on casting this and if not hey you've got a big double striker and the monarch and if you don't have each other humans on the battlefield don't put this in your deck <laughs> i mean i'm gonna be honest i could see myself testing it in like red white equipment because it sure. has double punch. strike it has a relevant etb sure. and you have some non-incidental humans in there but like even just like on an empty board, it's not the worst. It gives you the monarchy. You're drawing a card off it. You're clearing the board with something, and they have to answer it. Got that ancient tomb mana. I, I think know. I think the initiative has ruined people mm. in the sense that they forgot how messed up the monarch can be. Yeah, like the monarch is not okay. <laughs> it's not the initiative. Oh, yeah. not okay. But it's still very much a. This is a card that you know will likely deal with one of your opponent's permanents. Yep is a permanent itself and makes you the monarch. And the best monarch card in the format before this and Aragorn was Palace Chief. Yeah, just a vanilla also, two two like, for four. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's but, true. Actually, it's only one more man than Palace yeah, 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 It still yeah. kills a creature and has double strength. The two most played monarch cards do exactly that. Fall from favor and Palace Jailer right. is that they remove something that your opponent has and they give you the monarch. Jailer's the best because it removes something, gives you a blocker, makes you the monarch, and is repeatable. Much like what Aomer does here. And there are decks that exist that can play this, not just like humans plus colors, um, like the Naya Winota mid rangey kind of right. deck that you know plays oh, a man. recruiter and recruiter of the guard. Such stuff. a cool Winota include, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, such a cool Winota hit. Mardu, like even if you are a Mardu initiative four color initiative, a lot of the initiative cards are humans themselves. Yeah. So like, yeah, play this in triple mox deck and don't worry that it's a five drop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, next up, we have Eowyn, Fearless Knight. This is a 4-mana 3-4 legendary human knight for 2, a red, and a white. Has haste. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature an opponent controls with greater power. Legendary creatures you control gain protection from each of that creature's colors until end of turn. What a fantastic finisher. In... In so many decks. I mean, we're just talking about the power of something coming onto the board and just clearing a creature. It has, not only does it have haste, so it gets in two, but it helps your entire board push through that last little bit of damage. And if you're an aggressive red-white deck, um, do we have a name for like red-white D&T? Blood and Taxes. Blood and Taxes, Blood and taxes. something like that. Yeah. Even like Mardu plays a lot of haste creatures already. This could come in as a finisher. 
It's a legendary. So for like Naya Legends, it's a human for the humans decks. Like this has a lot of homes as a top end finisher, as just that, as a finisher. Yeah, big gotcha card. Oh my goodness, for sure. I'll throw to you. Flame of Anor. Uh, one blue and a red, it's an instant. Choose one. If you control a wizard as you cast this spell, you may choose two instead. Target player draws two cards, destroy target artifact, and deal five to target creature. So the floor on all these abilities are three mana instant speed draw two. That's pretty good. Pretty good. I've cast Archmage Charm once or twice. Uh, destroy target artifact. Likely, the it's the one that you're going to use the least, but when you use it, you're using it because it's going to save your GTA ass. Yeah. or something, right? Uh, and then kill target Shieldred, <laughs> which, is, which is pretty okay. I'm all right with that. Uh, you know, it, just three mana effectively destroy target non Merktide region. Yeah. The animator card. <laughs> destroy target creature that isn't Merit Lage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it doesn't feel bad to cast this. And just get one of these effects. If you cast this and get two, three mana kill your key creature, draw two cards. Three mana, Colgan's command is a tiny baby. <laughs> or I am Flame of Anor. Pretty good. Um, and it turns out blue and red has quite a few wizards that it likes to play. Shocking. Your Snapcaster Mage, your... Is Dreadhorde Arcanist a wizard? It's think, a wizard, right? It might be a shaman. I think that... It might be a wizard. Darcy's a shaman. I think Arcanist is a wizard. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, young Peasy is not a wizard, because yeah, I know a lot okay. of people can check that. Neither is a Conoclast, but there's a lot yeah. of wizards. Wizard. Oh, yeah, wizard. Red Horde Arcanist there's is There's so wizard. many, though. Like, Vendelian yeah. Cleek, yeah. Poppet, Stitcher. Yeah. Uh, the other bird wizard is also a wizard, Nimble isn't it? Obstructionist. Nimble Obstructionist is a wizard. Thank you. <laughs> a, a, bunch, a bunch. There are many wizards it will... in the game of magic, lol. So if you are playing blue and red, and you have a reasonable amount of wizards... You don't need a huge amount. It could be like three. I mean, let's call it. Let's be safe and call it like six. Okay. I was gonna say five, but all right. <laughs> okay. Well, let's meet in the middle. Six wizards call, in your hundred card deck. Let's meet in the middle and call it seven. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. Cool card. Nice shieldred, idiot. <laughs> yeah. Right. Prismari command is gonna have to be fighting for the. Oh, know, I didn't which... even mention. Yo, I hate Prismari command. I it think it's feels so a little weak. Right? It's so weak. I've always had a tough time including it. So now you can cut Prismari. People like to play it because like, oh, it helps me against Thassa's Oracle because you like sure, make, make them, them draw. dry. Yeah. You idiot. If you could resolve a three mana spell with a Thoracle on the <laughs> stack, like there's so many things you could do. This is just a better, like just play this card over so uh, Prismari funny. Command. Yeah, this, is a, this card, I honestly think pretty good get. Still not sure if it's as good as some of the white cards we saw last week's podcast, but I like this one it's a lot. It's good one, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's time to talk about fourth Aerolingas. Probably said that wrong. X, red, white for a sorcery. Create X, 2-2, two, two, red human knight creature tokens with trample and haste. Whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to one or more players this turn, you become the monarch. Uh, Remember that other card that made a bunch of knights for like X, red, white, but then your opponent also got knights? Oh, a Gonjo Uprising? A Gonjo Uprising. Yeah, yeah this is like that, but without all the bad words yeah, on it. Yeah, it's playable. <laughs> yeah, they have haste instead of giving your opponent's creatures they have trample instead of vigilance which is a little better and then also you get the monarch i'm I, i'm be real I, I don't i don't mind putting this in an aggressive deck where you're only thinking you're going to cast it for one i don't know like three mana if you connect this turn you get the monarch from trample ace like the floor is pretty high i'm a naya mid-range deck you're a blue control deck your game plan on turn one is to get a triumph i go mana dork you got your triumph. I untap and I play a land, cast this for zero, hit you, I immediately become the monarch. Even How without do you even making win? the token. You don't even need to make the token. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to argue for the bottom floor. And then Wheeler's like, uh oh, trap door. That wasn't even the bottom of this <laughs> yeah. house, Nelly. Look at the foundations of this place. It's got molding. Let's move in. That's. <laughs> Wheeler literally just, you and I are not the same. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Casting this I'm in on her turn two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're in her DMs. I'm casting it on turn two. Yeah. It scales <laughs> so well, though. Like, yeah, yeah, well, of yeah. course. Yeah, just got absolutely. control, just like fireball them with all these dorks. The fireballs that make creatures feel so much better when the creatures have trample and haste. Because then, <laughs> then they feel like a fireball again, right? Why do you, yeah. you get two damage for every point of X on this, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like, 
Yeah. You cast Fireball and oh. somehow duplicate it, right? Fourth Aer Lingus to the next game. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, that was a commander card. And next up, we have another commander card, Frodo. Uh, Frodo. Uh, Adventurous Hobbit. Frodo. 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 Uh, this is a two-mana, one-three legendary halfling scout for a white and a black. Partners with Sam, loyal attendant. Oh, Sam. My Frodo. Sam. Frodo has vigilance. And whenever Frodo attacks now a couple hoops here whenever frodo attacks if you gained three life three or more life this turn the ring tempts you then if frodo is your ring bearer and the ring has tempted you two or more times this game draw a card that's a lot of hoops to go through not that bad if it works i don't know this is a lot of hoops to go through, but when it works, it's great. Sorry, go ahead. May I just put in one very important point that we that you missed? That's partner with Ooh, card name, yeah. not partner. Oh, so so wait, when wait, right. Frodo enters the battlefield, it draws you Sam. Yeah, okay. We should talk about Sam really quickly then, because you're obviously we, going... We could pair them together. we just put them yeah, together yeah, yeah, talk yeah. about yeah. Sam now? Is that possible, so, James? So apologies yeah. to James if you want to right. jump ahead to Sam, no, comma, loyal We haven't seen a partner with card for a while. They, a they, very long They time. put this ability into Battle Bond, and then they brought it back in, what, some of the Commander products? Or one card in Eldraine? Is there's, there's a partners with I mean, Kenrith Twins. Yeah. It's very rare, so forgive us for yeah. missing so, that. Well done. Yeah, catch, when this really. creature enters the battlefield, the target player may put that the other name basically directly into their hand. So it's a two mana, one three, with a keyword, and some abilities, and draws a card. Sam, loyal attendant, is a three mana, two four, legendary halfling peasant. For one, a green, and a white. Partners with Frodo. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a food token. Now, a food token you can sacrifice to gain three life, the magic number that Frodo wanted. And you can stack the triggers in such a way that you can make the food token and then sacrifice it and, and a bunch of stuff. Also, uh, Sam has the ability food can be activated for one less mana. So instead of two to sacrifice it, it's one to sacrifice it. I don't like these cards by themselves. I don't think either of them is powerful enough that you would play it individually. Together, you've got a pretty interesting little deal there. Now, the one issue, if we go back to Frodo, is it doesn't have a way to tempt the ring by itself. So this further requires a little bit more if you wanted to make it work. And so you're, <laughs> you're suddenly starting to think of a situation where you have to include this in a deck that both synergizes with food has life gain has the ring tempts you as a fairly substantial inclusion into the deck uh, it's worth mentioning this is a, a fairly powerful engine though if you get it online that being said this is a 100 card singleton you're probably not going to want to dump all of your tutors into it and you could be doing much more powerful things with a, like the six card engine or something like that. But drawing two cards a turn is kind of cool because at this point you're going to be drawing a card off of Frodo and looting a card off the ring tempts you at level two. So we're going to be running into these again with um, the partner pairing of Mary, Mary, and, Warden, Pippin. Mary yeah. and Pippin. Yeah, I think there's a deck that plays all four of them. Yeah. We don't get partner with on cards that cost so little. Yeah, these are the cheapest partner with cards ever, right? And they, yeah. Two and three? Yeah. And they all work together and because they all they all synergize around food yes and we've talked about how easy food generation is yeah and how that is a deck that is much like the welder decks like the grixis welder and Jeskai welder this deck in theory and in the minimal practice that it has popped up is really just looking to nickel and dime its opponent and just be we're so annoying yeah and so while like sam's ability or even frodo's ability here um, seem kind of like lackluster. They just, it just all adds up to being just such a pisser. So there's a couple other cards specifically in green and white that we haven't talked about from the commander product more so than the main set that really do synergize with food. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of glad we didn't include them by themselves, but I think they're worth mentioning in this conversation. Yeah. And I've been very high on food for a while, like mm -hmm. for a while now. Heck, and I, You and me both, brother. <laughs> Well, you were saying last week, like you started theory crafting what this sort of food I've with like multiple two token yeah. stacks worked. And I just wanted to say that like maybe Sam fits into that deck by himself, even if you're not playing Frodo. 
it's close. Three mana, two, four. Free legendary. food every turn. The free food every turn is pretty cool, and the, and the discounts, and it's neat too. But like, I don't know if sacrificing the food. We have the payoff now, and earlier we talked about the gaffer is another great payoff for that particular food deck. Yeah. I don't know how to evaluate these cards yet. I think there's something there. I don't know if it's there yet, mm -hmm. but God, I need to brew this deck. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I want to put one little uh, don't get goozled by the rules on this one. Partner with doesn't cause you to search. So it doesn't, it's not affected by opposition agent or even mind sensor. You just oh, wow. <laughs> put it into what? your hand from your library. Do they have to do that you because still shuffle. it's of the commander mechanic or something? Like they have to make it not search? Oh, what so what am I on? The commander advisory group? <laughs> <laughs> Why would he possibly know the answer to what this? What a weird question. That's yeah. Actually, a, the answer to that is... <laughs> that is such a weird rules interaction. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you for pointing yeah, that out. It's, wow, it's, it gets around idiot bird. Yeah. I say this as someone that has a German opposition agent, and sometimes I forget what the card does. Oh my god! <laughs> like the exact Excellent. wording, but yeah. Okay. okay. Well, let, let's uh, let's move on. I forget okay. whose turn it is. Sorry. It's over the wheeler now, and he's okay. on Frodo. Frodo Baggins. Uh, white and a green for a one-three legendary creature, halfling scout. Whenever Frodo or another legendary creature enters the battlefield and under your control, the ring tempts you. And as long as Frodo is your ring bearer, it must be blocked if able. So this one's a weird one. This is honestly the card that triggered me putting other ring tempts you cards on here. Because we talked about how last week about how the ring tempts you. is one of these things where you want to have ways to do it multiple times. And this card is a repeatable way of getting the ring tempt you. It gets the ring tempting uh, you right away and makes a great ring bearer. Not just because it's a one mana or one power creature, but it's a two drop one power creature with three toughness can't be blocked means that you'll be able to get under the big creatures to keep, you know, the looting going once the ring is tempted you a couple of times. And if they have, they can't play mana dorks. Like after this right. card hits play, they yeah. can't play like. You're going to clear them all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Which is just really funny to me. Somebody playing like, okay, I guess I'll play this Abyssin's Pilgrim. Dies. When Frodo <laughs> comes in. And is Bots like, it yeah. in half. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, something we didn't really talk about previously, but cards like this carry a GTA. Yeah. so well yeah. just so 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 well what a nightmare can't yeah. be blocked or you have to block it and lose your mana dork and it can pump after blockers have been declared to sneak in that damage and make it basically stay online forever not to talk about how a card gets really good with ume so with so jita no 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 i'm not doing this to rag you i'm just about to give another point of like with jita in particular too you can buff Frodo yeah. to a very specific power toughness, power point, oh. so that you force a block with a very specific thing your opponent has, or you can buff your thing and decrease theirs. Like there's just a balance yeah. of controlling oh the board with God. this. That's kind of hot. <laughs> no, it's true. Like the, yeah. he, obviously everything's good with GTA, but Frodo Baggins is particularly good with GTA. <laughs> it turns yeah. out. All right, let's talk about Frodo's neighbor, Lotho, corrupt sheriff. Uh, it's one and a black for a 2-1 legendary halfling rogue. Whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, you lose one life and create a treasure token. Whoa, that's pretty hot. Um, I'm not sure immediately which home to put this in, but I like this card on rate. People cast more than one spell a lot in Canadian Highlander. So, yeah, I mean, just get a treasure token every other turn, or like every player's turn well you can do it on yours as well yeah yeah like white black dean teeth for a two one like this it doesn't tax Routine? your opponent and make it harder yeah. but it does reward yeah. you i feel like stuff. i just want to play this in decks that can find a black and a white pip now this, that i think about it i don't know man i think this is just like another archivist of ligma like it's just a two drop where you look at it and go like wow when my so opponent good, does yeah. a thing or if I, yeah it's yeah. just like i get a thing it's like okay but like the you need that scenario to pop up. You this one gives you a bit more control, but also just the payoff isn't that great, and it's not a you may do it. So like this card against red is just atrocious. Okay, so you could be in a trap sometimes, right? Yeah, obviously you can't control losing the life, um, but it only has one toughness and it has two power, which is nice. So you, I mean, they have to have specifically have like an O three to be able to hold it down. Oh no, the pig's gonna get you, buddy. I am low. On Lotho. Yeah. Low on Lotho? 
I still kinda, high on Lothu. I guess Lotho. I was kind of hoping this would be more exciting, but like it's no Thalia, right? It has no. It has. It had a keyword. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I just don't know that it wants to go in Death and Taxes, but maybe it wants to go in like Abzan Blade or, I don't know. Would you ever play this in like Lands? If you gave me twenty five bucks to do it, I would. Ne- I would never. <laughs> you would have to pay so me. To what's, play your, this what's, card. Your, what's your thought process behind lands here? Why? Why do you think this is a lands? Card? It's just like a good deck that has white and black. Bits. <laughs> That's my thought process. Yeah. Literally, I, I, I think I. I don't want to be mean. I think this card would make lands worse. We, like, really? Yeah. Okay. Surge knows a thing or two about making lands worse. <laughs> <laughs> Get him. Okay. Well, hey, hey. This is like the first card I think from this set where we have like a pretty divided. North 100 Council here, so mm-hmm. please let us know what you think of Lotho. I don't immediately have a home for it. Like I don't play a deck where I'm like, oh yeah, white black two one oh, me... trade binder. Yeah, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but all right, no. but that's my only slag on this card. I feel like it's good. Otherwise, if it was just two black pips, I'd be like jumping out of my chair. Mm. Yeah. All right, next up we have Mary, Esquire of Rohan. Two mana, two, two, legendary halfling knight for red and white. It has haste, has first strike as long as it's equipped. And whenever you attack with Mary and another legendary creature card, draw a card. I love that I'm getting all of the hasty red white cards, or legendary red white cards. This this is fantastic. I'll play it in equipment decks because of the equipment line. You can play it in legendary decks because of the legendary line. It's not a human. Which, you know, the other two had going for it. But yeah, this is a slam dunk in any of the decks that like those keywords or those colors. Also from the commander set, if uh, that's referen- you know, relevant. Uh, no, this uh, this one's from the main set. I apologize. This oh, yeah. is from the main we set. We marked down that it was from the commander no, set, no, no, but it's no, not. No, no, right. there's another Mary after this, that oh, is. Oh, I see. That's, that's the misunderstanding okay, that's there. Okay. Apologies. Nice catch, Wheeler. No worries. Shall as we- the premier quit. <laughs> <laughs> We can go on to the different, uh, the next Mary. Mary, Warden of Isengard from the Commander set. One green and a white for a 1-4 legendary creature halfling advisor. Partner with Pippin, Warden of Isengard. And again, partner with, effectively makes this card. When it ETBs, you draw that card. Uh, whenever your one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, you create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. And then the least fun line of text in all of the Magic the <laughs> Gathering. This ability only triggers once each turn. I'm not going to do anything bad with this. I just wanted to cast like a bunch of eggs or baubles and make a bunch of one ones. <laughs> but nope, can't have any fun. You can have one one one. So this is much like Sam and Frodo, the pairing before. You look at this card and you're like, okay, it does some good things. Like things I would want from a deck that could play this, right? Um, I'm going to make artifacts already. I like having more 1-1s because they're going to help me chip away at my opponent and block and just make it miserable. This is a 1-4, so it's not dying to bolt. It's a great blocker itself. Um, It's a cheap enough legend that you're not too worried about Caracas. And you can trigger this on your opponent's turn as well. So while it's once each turn, you can make a token on your turn, you can make it a token on your opponent's turn. Um, And it's just one of these pieces where it makes playing all of these small kind of nothing cards like baubles or just these food generators. It, it makes them Random all come treasure. together. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's talk about Pippin as well, just sure. like we did for the first two. Yeah. So Pippin's wild. Uh, Pippin yeah. is green in a black for a 2-2 halfling advisor with partner with Mary uh, and pay one generic, tap, make a food token. Tap, sack four food tokens. Other creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and gain haste until end of turn. So this is the cheapest repeatable food production in the game yeah yeah um, this, one tap this, make a food this card's incredible yeah it's just by itself yeah. this card is very 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 strong. real good um and then it just also closes the game <laughs> like it you get the repeat uh token generation at instant speed mind you and then if you just have a board and a bunch of food you could just tap this sack all your food and in with a million creatures some of them might be tokens generated by mary and now those tokens have haste and and they're four fourths with lifelink now. Yeah. yeah. I my my big one thing I really gotta get in before this is that while we're still theory crafting what this deck looks like, a lot of these decks are going to be on mox, 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 whatever. Right. And so two drops and three drops like this. 
that you want to get one out and then play out another or like get one engine piece and then get the other one that starts fueling it. And they're all like, they are so much more appealing in decks that have mox draws and they're decks that care about you playing Moxen because Moxen are cheap artifacts. So it's just, yeah. Oh, Pippin is also one of the first really big food payoffs mm -hmm. that we have. There's this, um, I think there's a common or uncommon in the set, which is the mushroom dogs. Yeah, right. Which is like sack three food and draw a card. I thought it was just sack one food. It gets vigilance on the turn and a plus one plus one counter. Peregrine took that's what I'm which is it with. Right. thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. other Pippin. Yeah, oh, okay. See the mono green Pippin. Yeah, the, like yeah. that. That yeah. And you're right about the dogs. Part of me, I confuse those two. Like food is obviously its own payoff. It's an artifact. Artifacts are broken, and you know, and it gains you life. And having life makes you not die. But now having something else to do with food is so huge mm -hmm. and and pippin i think is going to make a splash even outside of this weird like you can ignore mary you can ignore putting all four of the hobbits together and keep your eye on this one that's that's my my bet for here <laughs> pippin is easy <laughs> i like these cards but you're talking about food payoffs and i realize i'm sad that just giant stirrings wasn't good enough for y'all you don't want to pay three and sacrifice three oh, foods giant, and make it opportunity? Seven, seven? giant opportunity sorry yeah, yeah. Well, uh, on that note, the last food thing I want to mention is that when you get cards like this, it's important to revisit other cards that mention sure. Yes. Oh, food. absolutely. Because you'll run into cards that initially you're like, why would I want to play Wicked Wolf? Yeah. Which right. is like right? the four mana, three, three, fights a thing on ETB, and you can sack a food to make it indestructible, give it a one, one counter. What was that tap Hunter from Eldraine as well? One Savvy Hunter. Savvy, Savvy Hunter, Hunter yeah. I think, is amazing right three there. Three mana, three, three, attack or block, make a food, sack two food, draw a card. Yeah. Like, that card just gets so much better in that <laughs> Oh, so good suddenly, yeah. Yeah. right? Cards Even the Troll okay. King. Cards, are, cards get power level from being, like, they're all contextual. Adjacent. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Nelly, you the know next, where we are? The next yeah. Mary, right? No. no, no it's no, time no. for Moria. Moria Scavenger. Yeah. Hooray, a Moria Scavenger. Another black card. One black red for a 1-4 Orc Rogue with Death Touch and Haste. I like it already. But wait, there's more. Tap, discard a card, and draw a card. If the discarded card was a creature card, amass Orcs 1. Okay, so we've got a Rakdos Haste Rummager with four toughness and death touch. <laughs> and it makes bodies. And it makes bodies. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I, I'm i swooning. Honestly, like, I don't know what deck you don't want to put this in. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe it doesn't get into the most aggressive the, stuff. But he got us with the double negative there, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, honestly, though, um, seems sweet for reanimator. And I don't possibly good enough for Dredge. I don't really know what Dredge looks like these days. I like it for Dredge. Okay, great. And if I may, yeah. here's why. Um, with a Dredger, like a Golgari Grave Troll, for instance, you discard the Grave Troll and then immediately replace the draw with Dredging the Grave Troll. Yeah. And the creature that you get, like the Orc that you get, uh, making the additional bodies pretty good because that's a deck with a bunch of sack outlets. That's a deck that also wants to... You're, the modus operandi of that deck is how do I hogak my opponent yeah. into the dirt? <laughs> and making tokens that... Or making a token, I guess. You're never stacking up multiple of them. But making a token that could then cast hogak from the graveyard is pretty huge. Like this thing kind of casts hogak by itself, right? Because it's yeah. two black creatures. Yeah. And then you can pay the rest with delve, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so pretty good. Pretty good slam into yeah. dredge. Cool. All right, next up, Pippin, Guard of the Citadel. Two mana, two, two, legendary halfling soldier for a white and a blue. Vigilance, Ward 1. And then activated ability tap. Another target creature you control gains protection from the card type of your choice until end of turn. This is a fascinating new take on Mother of Runes. I like this a lot. It does an okay job of protecting itself from early removal with Ward 1. Unlike Mother Rune, it can't protect itself. It's only specifically another. And there's an interesting difference here with the protection from a card type as opposed to protection from a color. So with Mother of Runes, let's say you're against a red deck and they try and bolt your creature. You can then, you have protection from red. You can use that in combat after. Like it, it opens up entire other lines of play where you're you're more weak to removal and follow like specifically in the turns of play where combat and removal are intertwined with each other mother runes is better this is 
fascinating and different in other ways that we haven't quite explored yet. I'm curious to see what type of play patterns it adds. Yeah, I'm going to absolutely play this in every one of my blue-white tempo decks. I think Vigilance and Ward 1 makes it fantastic to carry a small piece of equipment, walk into combat with a friend, and protect anybody from anything else that might be going on. That's literally just what this guy does in the book, so it's very... Yeah. <laughs> just a Good small flavor. piece of equipment, walk in with a friend. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I, I like it anytime that you've got an equipment, basically. like that. that well, especially the ones that say when you damage a player, something happens. But also just good next to big things. I'm trying to think of what deck wants to play a blue-white 2-2 two -two Vigilance and also is going to try to sneak in some creature that doesn't have Trampler flying. Band Blade? Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's it's the decks with equipment, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I love it in there. Yeah. yeah. Or or Tempo. Is Sol yeah, yeah, Tempo's good, too. Soldiers. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of places. Love to see a bone splitter. I just really like how the play pattern is like you can flunge with this guy and still use the unblockable. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now for a bad Azorius 2 drop. Mm. Why it's Prince Imrahil, the fair. A little too fair, if you ask me. <laughs> On the nose name. Uh, white and blue for a 2 2 legendary creature, human noble. Not even a soldier, unbelievable. And whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 1 1 white human soldier creature token. That's a line of text that's more difficult to achieve than you would think. Um, especially, it only takes one casting of like sleight of hand with these cards in play to be like, oh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Um, Wait, Dark Confidant doesn't say draw? <laughs> I'm just, I just think there are better things to play than this card in uh, decks looking to generate soldier tokens, blue-white decks looking to protect threats like tempo-y strategies or, or humans strategies. It is a human that makes more humans. That card, that, that's a little appealing. But again, the way that human decks gets card advantage is through Dark Confidant, Recruit of the Guard, uh, recasting stuff off Luris or whatever. You know, so it just falls short and it looks uh pretty bad next to pippin even though there are two cards that do different things they kind of fight to find themselves in the same home and uh yeah this is we also just got third path iconoclast this card's just kind of embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> like it's just i don't know that'd be too harsh the on this doing card. their best yeah yeah that's fair it's like if you're if your condition for making tokens is going to require that the deck has to move in a direction other than the one favored by go wide strategies at least let us make more than one token a turn i don't know yeah it just seems a little too fair yeah next up all right, let's talk instead, now that we're done with Prince Imrahil, Imrahil about Samwise Gamgee. Oh, my Sam. Oh, Sam. It's Oh, it's Dad Gamgee in the art here. This is uh, Sam after he's returned from all of his adventures and sorry, is hanging out with four of his 1,100 children. Um, <laughs> it's a 2-2 two -two for one, or a green and a white, 2-2 uh, two -two for two, halfling peasant. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, create a food token. Sacrifice three foods. It's another food payoff. Return target historic card from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh, reminder, artifacts, legendaries, and sagas are historic. Okay, so now we can be rebuilding with our spare food tokens after the wrath. Plus, you get a food every time a creature enters the battlefield under yeah. your control? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just reading that first ability yeah. again. Yeah. That's... Potentially a lot of food tokens. Like, you've seen some of these cards where you can play the top card of your deck if it's a creature, you know? Or, like, these cards that loop a creature in and out of the graveyard and battlefield. Um, you know, you don't make food tokens off token creatures, but, like, yeah, sometimes this is going to make, like, 12 food tokens, man. Uh, watch out. What you, it's obviously going in that Hobbit's food theme deck, Abzan. I've been thinking but, about this card. But, yeah, where else? Is there another? Like, does this maybe get into... I would, Sandra? I would I'm considering this in a version of the of Sandy B. Yeah, I can see it. Or a version of um that plays closer to the like Rally the Ancestors style oh, deck. Oh, I'm always this, kinda half thinking about those decks and playing on this yeah. uh a sack outlet and cauldron familiar from oh, okay. Eldraine, the one yeah, mana one one the yeah. cat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That goes infinite. Right. And kills them. Um also like just Returning Besaju to your hand over and over by sacking food tokens. Oh. Just nice artifact deck. Yeah. Returning a Gonjo. God. I, yeah. I like this in uh, Recurring Nightmare as well. Mm -hmm. So Abzan Graveyard is a deck I've enjoyed rather substantially. And like this right next to... Um, 
Oh, heck. Elemental, green, white. It's a 2 2. Whenever they cast a spell, you get a voice, voice of resurgence. resurgence. This and voice of resurgence, just as a, you know, just as really low threats that have huge upside in the mm -hmm. early game, and you start looping stuff next to them or whatever. Yeah. Big fan. Wow. Nice. All right. Next up, Saruman, the White Hand. This is from the Commander deck. Four mana, two, five, legendary avatar wizard for one, a blue, a black, and a red. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, a mass orcs X, where X is the spell's mana value. And then goblins and orcs you control have ward two. So this does an interesting version of, um, was it actually, was the card actually called Shark Sharknado? Yeah. Shark Typhoon. Yeah, shark, shark Typhoon. <laughs> typhoon. Yeah. Now, the problem with a mass is it's only ever one body. So you can't make you cannot go wide with this, which is a lot of the strength of something like Shark Typhoon is multiple blockers. You can be aggressive, you can be defensive, and this is based on the colors and the power toughness. You're you're probably going to be defensive and then try and finish the game with this. So if you're going to want to play this, and it's a powerful effect, you're probably going to want to play in a deck where you're also planning on killing your orcs, where you can swing aggressively with it. And then if they don't block, you can sacrifice it. You can make another one as a blocker. Like, you want to really leverage the fact that you get a new creature rather than going tall with it because it doesn't have trample. You don't have a way to push that damage through. And a lot of people in our format will have a way to mitigate one very large donkey, as Wheeler would say. Mm. Uh, that being said, it's a strong effect. It's pretty cool. There are substantial downsides. Uh, specifically, it's a 2-5 for 4. It doesn't do anything when it enters the battlefield, and it's a legend and crack as exists in our format. Go with me on this journey. Goblins you control have Ward 2. Oh, I mean, <laughs> We're already playing red-black, and, like, you know, we've got spare points half the time. Maybe Mox Sapphire's new most commonly played home will be Aggro Goblins for Saruman. Saruman Goblins. Okay, I'm done. I mean, you get Phantasmal Image. No, no, no. Oh, 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 no, I've gone too far. I did. I mean, I did. There was that summer where I won a tournament with Time Walk Goblins. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or yeah, like yeah, Ancestral yeah, Goblins or something yeah. like that, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's been there. God. Yeah, you, you didn't that. You're a goblins deck, and you splash blue for Ancestral and Snapcaster, and that's <laughs> it, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay. Goblins you control have word, too. Think about it. All right. And it's mana value, so you're fire blasting. <laughs> oh. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's 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 move on. Okay. <laughs> Sauron, the Dark Lord. Three blue, black, and a red for a 7-6 legendary creature avatar horror. With ward, sacrifice a legendary artifact or legendary creature. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, amass one. Whenever an army you control deals combat damage to a player, the ring tempts you. And whenever the ring tempts you, you may discard your hand. If you do, draw four cards. Four cards. I don't mind the. <laughs> I don't mind reanimating this card. Um, yeah, I've come around to reanimating this card. How do it, they ever kill it? It feels a bit like Grave Titan. Like yeah. whenever they cast a spell, amass one. So the da the biggest downside of this card is that they could just block it. Right. <laughs> but you are amassing an army as that happens. And if they're blocking this, they're unlikely to be blocking the army, which means you are then discarding your hand, potentially filled with other things you want to reanimate to draw more cards. Um, yeah. Like, maybe they'll get you or they sack the Raghavan or, like, the Brawl or whatever. But that's still okay. Again, Reanimator now in like 2023 has gotten to this point where instead of just trying to represent something that your opponent cannot immediately, like that they just crumble to, you still do that occasionally. But a lot of the times it's like, here is my big idiot. It has drawn me some cards or you're going to have to three for one yourself. And once you deal with this one, I'm ready to do it again. And I think this kind of lines up with that mentality of like, you're probably going to, in order to get rid of it, you're probably going to have to pitch several cards and I've already gained, you know, made a token and maybe, uh, you know, I've made a pretty big token in order to get here. So yeah, uh, it fits uh, where reanimators at and uh, how does red get rid of this? <laughs> with, um, Zergo Bell Strikers help. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, yeah you're two right. two bolts and a Zergo. Bad, I, bad. Also, just like if you're reanimating this against Red, you really need to reread Iona. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. All right okay, let's... let's talk about. Sorry, 
I just realized someone's going to get me in the comments. You've got to sacrifice your Ragavan and your Zergo mm. and, and cast your two bullets. Red's going to be a four for one, not a three for one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now you can stop typing. Uh, it's time to talk about shadow summoning. White, black, sorcery. Create two tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. Period. Yes. Two flying mans for two mana. They can attack. Not the turn they enter the battlefield. But you only spent two mana. It's a sorcery. In this case, that's probably like a little bit worse on average than if it was a creature with flying that brought another creature with flying. They also come in tapped. I feel like just the fact that they come in tapped means that this card was tested <laughs> and it was a problem if they didn't come in tapped. I don't know. Whenever I see like a weird, like, oh, these are the only spirit tokens that come in tapped in the set or whatever, you know, it's like they must have tweaked it because like just mm -hmm. getting to have two flying, like getting to have the best dragons fodder ever, period, like... You know, you, you have to take blocking off the table for one. Not turn. to make this a podcast about this limited environment, but it does feel like the amount of flyers are pretty limited mm. and in fact are often pretty expensive. So having a card that could potentially make two immediate blockers that just bricks your opponent's five mana creature a couple turns in a Maybe row. Maybe that was a feel bad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this doesn't feel that powerful in the grand, grander scheme of things because we have um, lingering souls. Right, it's three man on one side, but it's two side on the other side, and it gets you four bodies on that one spell. And then there's um, three mana, uh, two and a white instant speed make two flying spirits. Midnight haunting. Midnight haunting. So like this has pretty steep competition, but I guess if you're all in on spirits, yeah, that rate of return for flyers is not bad. I like this card more than midnight haunting. Just though, I think the raw power level on this one and the cost reduction is a bit stronger, but where are we playing this and why am I playing this? Like where, what's going on? Where, where, where are we casting this? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the same problem I have with uh, the Sheriff. Oh, Lotho. Lotho, Lotho yeah. yeah. But, but I don't know. I'm seeing a card that gives me like very good rate. Yeah. But I don't know if we have a home for white, black flyers or, or white, black aggressive. Maybe. This feels maybe like we'll the card one. where they're like, okay, power level in this game is at the point where we can make this. And then, like you said, they're like, eh, make them tapped. Now this is just fine, right? Yeah, fair enough. Like, mm -hmm. if they were untapped, down to clown. It, it is kind of just the back half of Lingering Souls, which is sort of cute. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe this gets in. Like, I know they're tapped the first turn, but, like, still, maybe just because it's so cheap and it's something to do before you start dropping your Planeswalkers, maybe, like, so, if some sort of super friend strategy... It, it, well, people like are motivated to do that. If you're thinking you... like stacks, pla like stacks, planeswalkers. Yeah. Or yeah, because then you want things to block, things to chump as you start sacrificing permanents. But yeah, even even then, it's, there's, it's, there's probably got better there's yeah. probably an Orzov tokens list that yeah. is just like totally fine that yeah. could play this. All right, but you know, <laughs> let's let's move on. Uh, we're on to artifacts now, and the first artifact we're going to talk about is Lembas. Lembas. Yeah. Le Lembas. Lembas. You Lembas. Really all right, you really got to pronounce it S. This is a this is a nut, if you will. It's a two mana artifact. When it enters the battlefield, scry one, then draw a card, and then for two and tap and sack it, you gain three life because it's also a food. I'm gonna stop you there. That's the best nut I've ever heard. Okay, but wait, there's more. <gasps> really? <laughs> it must be all upside. When it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, shuffle it into their library. Now. Now Wheeler's going to be sad about this. I'm and, so sorry, and, buddy. <laughs> and some of you, some of you might not understand why that's a bad thing. So it turns out in our format, uh, your graveyard is a resource, and one of the worst things you can do to an artifact player, somebody who wants to play things like this, is to take away their ability to play it over and over and over. And these things, these effects are powerful for a couple couple of reasons. One is density. So every time we get another one, we're happy because we do that. But two. It's looping. It's using something like uh, uh, Goblin Tinkerer. That's not what that card's called. Goblin Engineer. Goblin, Goblin Engineer. Or Welder Goblin Welder. or something like that to have them swap places back and forth. It's being able to cast it out of your graveyard again and again with Loris. Or... If I may. Yeah, please. Although, I gotta say, did a great job summarizing Thank you. the strength of these in the format. The two mana ones have been the most exciting ones to get, more so than the one mana, just the eggs. Sure. One mana ones are eggs, two mana ones are nuts. The nuts are exciting because they bring back eggs, 
and we've been getting so for cards like scrap, scrap trawler, trawler, scrap mean, trawler. Yeah. I was gonna be like, well, not yeah. by themselves, but I understand. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cards yeah. like scrap trawler, and also um, they, while a lot of the eggs end up being, uh, obviously, you want a higher density of those. The nuts tend to draw cards on ETB, yeah. and so they replace themselves immediately with Kark Clan Ironworks in play. So you get the card draw and can sack them for mana, whereas the eggs, often you have to sack them to draw the cards, and you don't get the mana from them. So having more nuts means you can return more eggs, and getting the mana, like nuts being mana neutral, <laughs> this I feel like I'm losing my mind, <laughs> but it's relevant. Legi legitimately, if that last line of text, and this is classic Magic player, if that last line of text this is, is the in best there, card ever. it's the best nut we've ever seen it's just scry one draw one and oh, oh. so here's the question is this playable then no. yeah that's that's what i thought yeah you gotta you need that graveyard all right let's move on well wait before we move on i just don't want to be the only one in the comments um that's or no i don't want i don't want to be the only one on the podcast that didn't notice Yes, they kept calling it nuts when obviously it's bread. Okay, you're you're not losing, you're not losing your mind watching <laughs> yeah, that's, this. That's th bread. Th thank you, Nelson. Go that ahead. means way bread. Go ahead and let us know, though. It's fine. Uh, Wheeler. The One Ring, four mana legendary artifact, indestructible. When the One Ring enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn. At the beginning of your upkeep. You lose one life for each burden counter on the one ring. Tap. Put a burden counter on the one ring. Then draw a card for each burden counter on the one ring. What's up, dudes? Do you want to tap some Voltaic keys? Because I sure want to draw some cards. Uh, this card single-handedly has me excited to play Paradox Engine again. What? Like Paradox combo. One of us. Yeah, like... I mean, being able to just, if you can cast this, the one thing an artifact deck says so often is just, I just need one more turn. <laughs> I just need one more turn because of these stupid pesky hobbitses. I mean, Goblins. Cathar commandos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adeline. Yeah. <laughs> um, you just need like a little bit of uh, wiggle room. This is a card that can provide some tutorable wiggle room. Um, but if you just sneak it into play, and you have Paradox Engine, not that it needs any help, but also Voltaic Key, Manifold Key, um, any way of untapping Minimo? this card. Does that work? Is it untapped target? Monomo legendary? untaps yeah. a legendary thing. Yeah. You're just going to start drawing so many cards, and this just this is just going to loop. But so wait, easily. Wheeler, you're going to lose a bunch of life. Isn't that a bad thing? Good news, Surge. They won't get a turn. <laughs> <laughs> They'll die. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you... you completely negate all of the downside to this or if you're playing one of the variants that has like there's a mono blue academy list that plays like a paradox list but also has more planeswalkers and time warps um just bounce your ring yeah <laughs> just like draw the just cards it, time yeah. warp and they're like you know into the royal kicker or cryptic command this back to your hand you'll figure it out god <laughs> also if you open the very fancy one of one ring and you hear us on this show you are obligated to send some amount of the money you get from selling it <laughs> to everyone in this room. Mm. Nelson, myself, yeah. Serge, even James gets a cut. Yeah, if you're getting a million dollars for this, which is the current bounty for the no, card. up to two mil. There's a store it's in Spain. It's up to Spain two mil? That wants you can, two mil, you can ship mil. us a little something something Just a, a, thank just you. a little yeah, something you know? something. We'll use it on Can Lantern cards yeah, yeah, anyway. We'll make more content for you, we <laughs> promise. All right, take us home with the artifacts, Nelly. It's time to talk about Wizard's Rockets. One mana artifact, so does that make it an egg? It enters the battlefield tapped, and it has X and tap, sacrifice Wizard's Rockets, add X mana in any combination of colors. Ooh. When this is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Oh, yeah. So, any combination. Yeah, so it turns out Gandalf just had a bunch of Terrarians on him. That's what he was shipping in the, in the cart. Um, so if you're a fan of Terrarian... Good news. This one's even better because you can like sack it when you don't have any other mana. There are spots where Terrarian does, and the eggs do not cut it because of that two mana cost. Right. Yeah. Like it sounds goofy to say, but these decks can be very mana tight when they're casting like crop rotation for Terrarian Academy and setting up. This letting you hit on the low for only using it for one is great. And 
this does every when we talked about energy refractor from bro being this repeatable you just sync all your infinite blue or infinite colorless into whatever this also lets you do that it's a little bit slower but again redundancy in those kind of effects is uh is great also there's a horse in the art it's an egg with two <laughs> egg horses. with horse yeah mm. well yeah what there's a toy horse or a rocket horse and a real horse yeah incredible all right let's move to lands now and while we have six lands to talk about realistically we have two things that we're going to talk about and for starters we're going to talk about the entire cycle kind of at once mm -hmm. uh and oh my god i'm going to nail the canonically perfect pronunciation of all these lands baradur minas Tirith, the mines of moria rivendell and the shire now what they all have in common is they enter the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature they tap for Basically, one of the Wooburg colors that fits with it. And then they have an activated ability that kind of works well with it. So, Baradur, um, X, X, and Black. Amass, X, Orcs. You can only activate this anytime a creature died. Uh, Minas Tirith is one in a white. Draw a card, activate only if you attack with two or more creatures this turn. The Mines of Moria is the red one. Three and red. Exile three cards from your graveyard. Create two treasure tokens. Rivendell is one in a blue scry to activate only if you control a legendary creature and finally we have the shire one in a green tap an untapped creature you control to create a food token i've introduced them all i think we're kind of all on the same page here wheeler and nelson yeah uh cost to include these is pretty low yep if you have a deck where you don't think it's going to come into play untapped most of the time really consider whether you're going to play it or not <laughs> If you have a deck where you look and you're like, oh, wait, I have like 23 legendary creatures. You should probably put all of these in your deck <laughs> if you have the space. It's it's honestly getting tight at this point. Like, you don't want to cut your triomes if you're playing three colors, and you don't want to cut your fetch lands and your duels. It, and you the, need a certain number of basics. These scream two-color decks. Yeah. Me. They're two-color. They go into two-color decks as utility lands, and those decks typically do play a lot of legends because there's a recurring theme on this uh, set review podcast, Kappa, where we mention these powerful <laughs> legendary creatures that fight for a slot in like the three-color or four-color variants of archetypes, but in one or two. They're going to find home. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's nice to call the Shire home. Um, oh. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, the the white one is the best one. I was about to say, brand new segment, rank that land. White one, green one. Red one? Black one. Oh. Blue one, red one. Oh, red yeah, last? Okay, I had yeah. the red one. I had the red one higher than you, the mass. You dig too greedily and too greedily. <laughs> really? Yeah. I love this. In a big red deck, in a medium red deck, like you get cards in your graveyard all the time, and it makes you treasure. Too oh God, and I too have greedily. five mana. What if I had seven <laughs> mana? Like, is that what I have to do whenever I'm thinking I that? Oh, Stop yeah. rubbing your nipples. Yeah. What's wrong with the two of you? Well, I didn't know. I didn't I even know. rub my nipples. That's why. I did, What's I did, wrong with like, me is I want seven it. mana. Yeah. All right. Well, we're all low on. We're all really equally bad. low on blue. I'm with Nelson. I'm swapping. I'm swapping. I keep it blue and fourth. I'm swapping red and black. I like the. I like the amass the least. You don't think the black? Well, the black uh, one. I guess it's three. It's like four mana to make a one one, right? It's like you got to pay a black but, and, and a, a creature and had tap. to have died. Yeah. Uh, that I don't so much mind. It's just the XX that I'm. Not oh yeah, I'm just doing this for one. Yeah, okay. Three mana, make no, a one one, yeah, activate only if a creature dies. That's like the same as or it's one cheaper than the, the Castle white. Arden yeah, Vale. Yeah, yeah. Castle Arden yeah. Vale. So it's like one cheaper than Castle Arden Vale, but only when a creature died. But it doesn't say sorcery or anything, so it could be on your opponent's turn. Yeah. yeah. Creatures and it could be, die a fair their, bit. Their stuff can die too. You're in black. Hey, if creatures aren't dying, good news. Creatures aren't <laughs> yeah. dying. My, Minds of Moria just feels to me like it's like, okay, I have five mana and the luxury of being able to tap this. You're Excuse a big me, red deck. What else are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Casting dragons, <laughs> trying to like take advantage of. No, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. to me, this one just feels like it's a bit too much. A uh, bit of a win more card. All right, and we have one last card to talk about today. Mount Doom. It's a legendary land. Tap, pay a life to add a black mana or red mana. One black and red and tap. Deal one damage to each opponent, and then finally five black, red, tap, and sacrifice Mount Dude. Doom. Doom. Mount Dude. It's Mount Dude, Dude now. Mount yeah. Doom and a legendary artifact. Choose up to two creatures. Destroy the rest. Whoa. Activate only as a sorcery. I'm probably just playing this just as a red black dual land, to be honest. Like, it's not it's not that deep, that particular color combination when you're looking for duels. Pretty happy with that. I 
I think it's neat that the other lands or the other abilities also exist, but like you had me at the first line of text for, <laughs> for what it's worth for me. I could see that second line coming up in like there's that mono there are mono red builds that splash black because you get an extra mox if you want. And if you go jet, you can play Scrap Heap Scrounger. Um and you just play Badlands and maybe a Blood Crypt. Yeah. I like you can play this card. That the second ability is really good. It's just finding a home for that kind of effect in our format. Is yeah. a little, and you don't need to, because like you said, the floor is great, but it's it's worth paying attention to. That third ability <laughs> like, I mean There's so few legendary artifacts in our format too. Yeah. Yeah, finding the legendary artifact is rough. Obviously, the payoff is great. I mean, I don't yeah. care that it's only as a sorcery to kill all their creatures and keep two of yours. Like, GT? Mox Amber, maybe. The new barely. Ring, like, the new one ring. Like, that it will see play in our format. Mm -hmm. We just talked about it, right? Paradox now. Engine. Paradox, Paradox engine. engine. So they exist, and it's taking every bone in my body to not just rattle off every legendary artifact. <laughs> you just but, have them upstairs. Yeah, but it's just like, they they don't show up beside this land. Mind Slaver. Yeah. No, they're Ooh. all like blue text. That is, that yeah. is legendary. <laughs> Hope of Giraber. Oh. Yeah. That's the one. Shadow Spear? Shadow Spear. Shadow Spear is a very played oh. legendary Nelson, artifact. we were listening cards that C play, but they're not great. That card's just everywhere yeah 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 i'm yeah. just saying like you know that's a card yeah. that could be in a deck that wants to play this just because it's a mana fix sure all right yeah. and then you get to turn seven thousand and you win all right so here's the point in the show where we do our final thoughts on the set and my thoughts i'll go first because i often don't have too many thoughts on the set i like this one the set is not cracked the power level is pretty okay and it is introducing Potential new decks that didn't exist before in a way that makes me very excited. Specifically, food matters. But food matters not just in a like, hey, you get a bunch of artifact density into like the blue decks, but like food, food. matters. And that's fascinating. And I hope people start brewing around that. Also, shout out to the Red White Legends that are going to make my artifact decks better. <laughs> my main thought is, whereas before I would counsel people to include Caracas in all of their decks... For the next few weeks, maybe think about including Expedition Map, even if you wouldn't, just to go get your Caracas, because there's just so many legend creatures. Some of them have ETBs, and bouncing them is not going to be that great for you, but like, there's just a lot of really exciting legendary creatures introduced in this set, so Caracas's yeah. value just like really goes up. What is Orcish Bowmaster's tr trigger on ETB? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, what is the ETB and when they draw cards? <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah. It's for every draw. Yeah. yeah. Cool. cool. Good set. Yeah, good set. <laughs> good set. Good set review, friends. Good set. Yeah. Good set. All right, friends. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed. I've been Serge, joined by Nelson and Wheeler. I made you some content. Huge shout out to James on Tech and to our editor. A reminder that everything we do is only possible because of your support over the Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. If you think we miss any cards, you just want to talk about your favorite card or tell us that we look cool or something like that, hit us down in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you for having me. It's good to be here.